we are at the Goa International Live Jazz Festival and I'm so excited and privileged to have Jojo Mayer and Nerv. <laughs> And um, it's just fabulous to actually have him here and we'll just start with Jojo and how does it feel to be playing in Goa? Oh, it's always um, no, no, nice and magical to come to a, a place for the first time, you know, it's nice and looking forward to the show tonight. Uh, we saw we have a lot of fans here that I didn't, and didn't anticipate. They came from all over India to, to see us play here. Yeah. Can you, you <laughs> can you hear that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, also introduce your band for the for our viewers, which is going to be like large and across the country. So it'll be like interesting to know every uh, member. And also, how did you guys come together? Okay. Oh yeah, I gotta start at the at the far left. John Davis on bass. Uh, John has been. My longest affiliate, you know. I mean, we've been playing together for, I'll say, uh, 15 years, you know. So he's uh, my partner in crime with that. Um, and uh, <laughs> 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 uh, a lot of the, you know, the the basic syntax has been formulated in collaboration with with John. You know, so the, the drums and the bass is always an important. Uh, uh, relationship you know so it was like John is not the first bass player like I started uh, this concept in the the late 90s with a party called prohibited beats and you know, there was a bunch of other bass players uh, coming before John but I've been definitely playing with John the longest and and uh, and it's um, much of what nerve is 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 coming from our relationship really and Next to him is uh, Aaron Nevesi. Um, Aaron is uh, our sound engineer, but he's not just a sound engineer, but he he interacts with us with the sound. So he changes the sound and you know deconstruct our signal. So we kind of control the the input, and he cr controls the output of it. So he's an important, though invisible member. Of of the band that uh, that contributes a lot of the uh, texture and you know the, the surface that uh, relate to the the aesthetics of uh, some of the music that emerged in the digital age. So he's very important. And uh, sitting next to me is like our our, our youngest uh, and newest member, uh, Jacob Bergson, on the keyboards. And uh, Jacob has uh, played with us for about four years and uh, has been contributing a lot of new ideas as far as uh, the production goes and some of the, some of the he's has also helped us to bring in open new doors and you know uh, I think uh, be a little bit more adventurous and throw overboard some of the things that were giving us giving us safety you know and, uh, like the last record it was uh, he put a lot of uh, arrangements into the music so uh, I mean everybody here in the band is I'm the only guy who's not a sound engineer they're, they're all sound engineers and uh, and they all listen at the music and look at the music not just from a standpoint of view of a instrumentalist but also from a producer's standpoint and I think that is very important in what we do so that that is I think uh, one of the conceptual strongholds of what separates us from 99% of all other bands uh, playing that uh, that's it's a band made out of producers uh. and um this is your first time to India, yeah. uh, and uh, any I mean, any observations, especially about this the whole jazz scene, because you've met a fair number of people, I guess. So, anything that you would you know, which is striking about Indian music, or you know, something which would you would like to talk about? Well, I mean, it's awesome to be in India for us, you know, for the first time. Uh, it's a place that we love, you know, the food and the music and. Uh, we haven't, unfortunately, I wish we'd been able to hear some Indian classical music while we're here. Um, 
we didn't get a chance to. But it's been, you know, it's been wonderful to meet all the fans, all the people who are really into what we're doing, and everyone we're working with has been super helpful. And you know, it's just been a really fun trip. Yeah. Uh, anything else to add? <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, India is such a different place from where we live, but we're, you know, we're all. You know, in New York, we're, we're such a multicultural society that we are in contact with a lot of Indian culture, but it's really great to be at the source, you know, especially we're all total foodies as well. So for us, it's been a real treat to, to actually have Indian food in India and, you know, be you know, we've learned so much about that part of the culture, which has been great. And obviously the music scene is so vibrant here that um, it's been great to interact with, you know, a lot of the fans and musicians, or the, a lot of the people who have been to see us are musicians who are also playing here and, um, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of interaction and sort of cross-pollination with those people as well. Yeah. Uh, the 90s uh, New York party scene was of course legendary and we've like read about your prohibitive beats and you know the music that you've done. So how do you think that it's also changed now or we are looking at a different kind of music which is like you know an interspersing of digital and dance and hip hop. So you know any observations on that? Well, <clears throat> well, New York has changed for sure, a lot. You know, was, New York was a was a different city, like just twenty years back. You know, and it was more colorful and it was more cultural. You know, and uh, New York unfortunately has become more of a, a shopping mall for rich people now. And, uh, a lot of the pushed a lot of the a lot of the artistic intelligence out. You know. It, I mean, there's still it's it's a very very big city, so there's still things going on, but it's definitely not so important anymore, I think. Uh, and what was the other part of the question? No. Uh, how would you classify your music now from what you were doing also in the '90s? Because oh. it's also like a mix of da dance and digital technology, right. and you know. Well, in the beginning, you know, I was just trying to f I mean all throughout my life I was always attracted to to freshness and new things and surprising things and radical things and things that are unexpected and and a little bit wild uh, all throughout my my, my life uh, I, I also aspired I mean but the, the people who had influenced me they, they were all people that changed the game you know like uh, Louis Armstrong or Ellington Charlie Parker and Coltrane, Hendrix, Frank Zappa, Pink Floyd, Aphex Twin, and so on, James Brown, you know, all these people were deviating from like the norm to create something new. So in the in the 90s really uh, electronic music took a turn. It became more sophisticated and the vocabulary all brought something to the table where for the, for the first time I felt uh, electronic music has been taking the helm of uh, expressing the time that we live in and you know I didn't hear it in jazz anymore I didn't hear it in rock I mean which doesn't mean that it's bad music but I'm saying as far as like uh, cultural vanguard you know I was always attracted to that so I, I I heard that in electronic music and I loved it and I was trying to find a way to to put together what I was but I knew what I was doing, like kind of creating music in real time with uh, with with the programming as aspect. So uh, I started this cultural platform party. It was a weekly party in New York called called Prohibited Beats, where essentially it was a, a place where where musicians and visual artists like were meeting and trying to create new syntax. And in in the beginning, I was just we were kind of imitating program music so I called it reverse engineering beat so I was learning to imitate the sound of a drum machine or sound like a drum machine and uh, and uh, I got very very close to that and we got a lot of attention really immediately and uh, but eventually I started to f come to terms that I was not able really to play like a machine but uh, on the same time I understood that it was not really necessary for me to do that because I managed to create the illusion like I was playing like like a drum machine. So that opened the door to create new syntax. And I think new syntax today is really what this band is about, you know. I mean, we are, I think we see ourselves as, you know, being 
being at the fulcrum of locating possibilities to push open new doors. You know, I don't know what the music in the future is going to be, but I know what the music of the past is. And none of us really wants to, with all due respect, you know, we all respect what came before us, but we're primarily interested to play tribute to all the great innovators that came before us. And once again, choose more of a freedom over the security side. And hopefully create new syntax, because I think new syntax is has always been extremely important as it relates to our atomistic evolution as humans um, because every great accomplishment eventually will become co-opted by interests that were different than the interests that generated this, this, this art form. You know, you, you have great things on rock and roll, jazz, Christianity, communism, you know, basically good ideas, but they were uh, they were um, corrupted by interested in money, interested in power, interested in, in, in control. That's why we always have to build new syntax so the basic values can reincarnate into a new art form or a new style. And this is essentially what we're trying to do, especially finding somehow a reconciliation between the the human world and the digital world you know as we're, as we're facing an age of robotization and and automation the the question about the legitimacy of a human performance is a very very important one because a lot of people will lose their their jobs to like machines yeah. so that's why we're trying to find solutions on how we can build syntax and solutions how humans can coexist with the technology that we're about to create and that requires our atavistic evolution to 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 uh, to develop and for this we need new syntax otherwise uh it's going to be difficult for humans very very soon <laughs> okay.